When you step on the court, it's really important to understand how valuable that time is. I see so often all these players of different ages and different levels that they go out there and they give a half amount of effort and it drives me crazy. Whether you're with your coach, ball machine, drop hitting, by yourself, serving, whatever you're doing, you need to understand that to level up your game, it takes more. First of all, I want to say thank you to Love Tennis for letting us use this footage because without it, we wouldn't be able to analyze and do this video. I saw this video the other day of team training, and I'm going to play the whole thing here right here for you, and the intensity that he has during this training, and it's just like a 12 ball drill that his coach is hand feeding him, nothing crazy, forehands and backhands, he's not doing anything spectacular, but He's training and every single ball has a super, super high intensity level. I want to preference this by saying I'm not talking about when you're working on a technical element of your game. When you're working on something technically, you need to slow down and you need to make sure you're using video and you need to make sure that everything is in slow and very methodical pro progressions to really be able to make those stick into your game. But when you're at a high level and you're just working on getting a lot of reps and really high intensity and all of those things that go into play like team is here, then there are certain elements that I want to make sure that you're doing to make the most out of your practice. The first key element that I want you to look at is his legs, the lower half of his body. You're going to see him really getting down and low on every single forehand here. Look how low he is to the ground. This is a really good example of how he's going to be able to use the ground force to really push up off the ground. Without getting low, he's just going to be standing up and using his upper body. That's what I see a lot of times when I'm having someone out there just hitting the ball machine or a coach just feeding them balls. It's really important to get the most and a lot of that comes from using your body and using your legs to get down and really use the ground. The second element I want you to focus on is looking at all the adjustment steps that he's taking. One, two, three, four, before that forehand. One, two, three, four, five, before that forehand. One, two, one, two, three, four, four, before that forehand. And then he runs over. And he's taking little adjustment steps, extra ones once he gets to the backhand. Now, and that's really important. When you have a close environment with your ball machine or your coach or your drop feeding to yourself, you need those extra adjustment steps. It's not about always just taking big steps. You want to take big steps to get to the ball when you're trying to cover ground. But when the ball is in your vicinity, and especially when your coach is just hand feeding you balls, you're going to have those time to take the extra adjustment steps that are needed to really put yourself in a good position and this is really well seen by you're gonna see when he runs to this backhand here you're gonna see the big steps that go on first and then he takes one two three four five right before he hits that backhand that's typical of a high advanced level player and really in this training environment you would see a low level player or someone who's not really taking the time and understanding how valuable their time is on the court that they're just like taking a couple steps and then hitting or reaching to the ball the goal is to take the little small adjustment steps once you've already taken the big steps to get there so that you can really use the advantage of getting in the perfect position on a ball that's really it's being fed to you you know where it's going so you have that opportunity to be in the perfect position to work on being able to hit the ball from there the next thing I want you to look at is the acceleration. We're going to start with the backhand. You're going to see him accelerate through that ball. Then he moves around, takes a forehand, accelerating through that ball. He's not just barely swinging and getting the ball in. He's accelerating with everything that he has. That is key to really being able to do that once you get to match play. If you don't practice with high acceleration, then when you get in match play and you're trying to accelerate your forehand or your backhand, it's not going to work. You're going to end up making an error because you're not training that way. You want to be able to use the things that you're training in your practice, in your match play, then you need to make sure that you're doing those critical things in your practice. 
The fourth thing is about making adjustments wide and long with your strokes. So you're gonna see here, he hits a forehand and he misses it wide. So this very next ball, what do you think he's thinking about? He's thinking about not hitting the ball wide. And so you're gonna see him make the ball land very much inside the line of the sidelines. He's giving himself more margin for error. So the whole goal is in practice, you're trying not to make the same error twice. So he's getting hit the same ball over and over on the forehand side. There might be a little adjustment of up and back, but you know, all relativeness, it's about the same forehand. But he's gonna make adjustments on the deep side as well, but especially wide. If he misses wide, he's not gonna miss the very next ball wide. The fifth thing is never try to quit on an error. So you're going to see team miss this ball here. He misses his forehand in the net. He's not gonna quit on that ball. You can see his coach go, oh, never mind. We're gonna turn around, we're gonna do it again because he knows he doesn't wanna quit on that ball. He wants to hit another ball. And then the next forehand clips the tape and goes in. That's still not good enough. You want to have a really good forehand and an effective shot here. So you can see now he's getting ready to do two more balls because why not if you miss two balls, let's go in and make another two in a row to make sure that we're here right in the key element. That's really what it's about. It's about not giving up. If you make an error, totally fine. Just don't make the same error over and over again. The same thing that we talked about wide, but just don't give up. Make sure that you keep training. Drop another ball for yourself, even if it takes. Ask your coach for one more ball. Hit one more on the ball machine. Make the last ball. It's gonna leave you with that sense of confidence and leave you with a sense of like, I know I can make my forehand under pressure, so when I get to play my match next week or tomorrow or whatever, I'm gonna be able to make this ball when it comes to the time that I need to make it. The sixth and final thing that I want you to focus on, and this isn't everything, but this is the six things that I saw just looking at this video that really spoke out to me. And the last one is, this is the end of the last set. He's tired. He's tired. He's gonna take a little break. His coach knows he's tired. He's gonna walk around. He's gonna take a little breather because he just gave everything that he possibly could give in that 12 balls, which I think was supposed to be less than that. But remember, he didn't give up, so he hit a couple extra balls. So it doesn't matter how long your sequence is. Do everything you can to give every amount of effort for that sequence and then rest in between. You don't have to keep going nonstop 30, 40, 50 balls, but do, you know, start with three balls and give everything you have. And then after that, work your way up to doing five balls in a row. Then work your way up to doing, you know, seven, 10. You don't really need to do over 12 to 15 at most balls because you're not gonna have a ton of rallies that last over seven or eight balls anyways. But it's really important to increase your stamina and really you know, push yourself in that element and make sure that you're giving it everything you got and after every set, you're tired. You're not just like, all right, feed me the next ball. You're tired. You can see here that he is tired. He's taking his time. He's releasing his hands out. He's staying relaxed, getting ready for the next part of the practice or the next sequence that's coming at him. I just gave you six elements to look at in a 12 ball rally. And you can tell that this was a quality practice for him. Now, the next time you're out there, I want you to ask yourself, am I giving it everything I have? Was this really use of my time? Am I understanding the value of being out here on the tennis court for my practice? And if the answer is no, then you need to step it up. That's point blank. You have to work harder. You have to do more. That is the way you're going to see improvement. Always keep in mind that someone out there is working harder than you. And so you need to make sure that you're using every single moment that you're on the court to the best of your ability. And that when you leave the court, you know you've given it everything you've got.